Hi and welcome to the introduction and uh, tutorial to the one page navigation. So first of all, the one page navigation app is created for use on teams created uh, used with the bird's eye team. So there are actually two requirements. First, the bird's eye team needs to be your base team and you need to have the new Weebly element called section. You can see it under structure on the left. If you have a section element, then you can move on to validating or checking if the second if you meet the second requirement which is having the bird's eye team so an easy way to check this is by clicking on team change theme and then in the menu you can see you have at the top it says all teams recently and custom recently used we will click on it and then you can see the first one is the one we are using and it is called bird's eye team or bird's eye and the name is online store we're not going to change this because we already got it but let's say for example you would want to change it because you want to use the one page navigation but your team is not bird's eye that is really easy again as well you just click on change team like we did before just to check and instead of clicking on recently used we check the teams each uh, tab you can see right here online store business portfolio personal and all they all have at least one bird's eye team. So if you hover over it, you can see the name of the team, which is called Urban Dine, and they're using the bird's eye team. Second one is High Peak, and they're also using the bird's eye team. Third one is another one, which is not using the bird's eye team, so you would have to keep looking for another one. And like this, you can be looking through all the teams and see which one you can uh, use. You can see this one, for example, Oikos is also one, and Sarah Smith also again since we're already using the bird's eye team I don't need to change it and I can keep moving to the next section so the first logical thing would be to create your page layout already um, by adding sections you do need to use the section element as I said before in order to be able to use the one page navigation again validate and make sure that you have the structure uh, under structure the section element and then you can see i created here a lot of sections starting with a header banner like this with a background image a solid white background another one with a background image and then a product section with a solid light gray color a green section and another background image with some contact information and then we have our footer which we're not going to use so let's have a quick look to the to the result we would like to have you can see that we have a menu at the top and that when we click on the links that it will scroll to those sections about us contact us and the intro section and so on so we're gonna be recreating this menu so what you would do is also keep in mind that it's not because you add the menu that afterwards you cannot create uh, addi additional sections. You can keep removing, adding, even changing sections from uh, from its current position to another place. Uh, there, it wouldn't matter. It would still be working and linking to those sections. For logical reasons, we will add the navigation menu element that you can find under third party to the last section added on our page i'm going to add it in the footer in the create footer element just like that as a last element of the page as well so once that is being added you can see that we have a placeholder image which is called one page navigation uh, an element like this and that our navigation menu changed so it uh, removed the current navigation element of the team and you will be able to create your one page navigation the one page navigation like i said before you you it makes you able to link to specific sections on your page and it will smoothly scroll to those sections but you can also add external links of course to another page on your site either or to another page on uh, on the internet on any site so first of all let's have a quick look to how many links we're using in this example we're using five links uh, and the last one would be an external link this external link could be for example a link to a blog page you have on the site or a uh, maybe a store page or something like that so clicking on the menu 
we need to add some navigation menus. Under navigation item styles, the default amount is three. Let's set that to five. So we can add some additional links to it. And now you can see we have uh, five links. Also uh, note that there is a, an element above, this is only visible in the editor, an element above the navigation, which will allow us to more easily access the text tools that you have here from Weebly. We'll only be using the text tools to link navigation items. So first of all, the first item was called intro and the second one the second one was called uh, products third one was about us and we had another one which was contact us wait and then you have an external link for example in order to be able to link to those sections we will need to know the IDs of those sections. You do this by clicking, by toggling on the first uh, option under section ID and you just toggle it on. Once that is fixed you can see that each section added with the section element right here has an ID at the bottom so you can see right here and also this ID contains, it's actually a URL string that contains an ID, you can see the ID at the end. There is something else you need to do because you can see that it says the, that it gives the name of our website. Again, this wouldn't matter actually because you can still use that URL, but for a logical reason we would be using our own URL of course of our domain. So what you would need to do is Right under section IDs, you just remove this Wadon's domain name URL and you grab the one from your from the address bar in the browser, just like that. You copy it and you paste it right here. So once this is pasted in, you can see that this uh, link, this URL string here, it will change. So our first link will have to go to this section. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this uh, item right here in our menu and then click on the link element just as you would be linking with any text element in Weebly. Click on website URL and then paste in that URL. We're going to uncheck the open in new window although it is not required it makes sense to do so. The next thing we will do is we will link to our products section which is this one right here and we will grab that. We don't need to move up actually we can actually do it like this again website URL, paste it in, uncheck the open new window, scroll down and go to the about us section which is this one. Remember again the you, the strings, the URLs with the, the ID are always at the bottom of the section. So this is the about, select the whole uh, piece of, link, uh, of navigation item and then paste it in just like that. Next thing is the contact. So this is our contact section. We need to scroll to the bottom and then we'll grab this one. On the link button, website URL, paste in the link, uncheck the opening new window. And then for our last link here, we will just link to a, to a page on our website. But as you can see, you can link to a phone, file, an email, and all the other things, but we're just gonna link into the menu page, a dummy page on our website. Okay, once we have linked to all the sections on the page, we can uncheck, we can remove those section IDs, of course, by unchecking, untoggling these show section IDs, because we're not gonna be needing them anymore. And now let's have a look at the published, published version to see if our links work. If it wants to load, of course, and then we click on intro, products, about us, contact us, and then external would be going to the other page on our site, just like that. Now, there is also tons of options, of course, like background color, 
there is a background color when the menu is at the top. Then when you scroll down, there is another color you can set. You can also specify the transparency by setting this number right here. So for example, when you scroll down, you can see that it is a white color, but that it has some transparency on it. The higher the number, the op more opaque the the background will be. So 100 will be completely opaque and then you, you would have a solid background color. You can use the border, uh, set the border color as well. You can also specify the inner width. So if you want it full width, you just take a really high number. It can be even a lot taller than this one, of course. And then you can see that everyone, everything lines up right there. You can align your items, you can center them, you can align them to the left or to the right as they currently are. You can also align the logo itself. You can also uh, entirely remove the logo. The logo is inherited from your uh, website, from your website, from your site. So this logo was either uploaded uh, previously to this page or on, on on any other page to your uh, from your website. If you are using a text logo, it will grab that text and then you have some additional options as text color, some letter spacing, uh, font weight and so on. Then in this last section, you can also see that there is a screen width uh, mobile, nav uh, mobile navigation. So this will decide when the mobile navigation will be triggered. So Let's set it, for example, to a high number, 1900. And then you will see that our menu has our mobile navigation already at a high value. But we're not going to do that. We're going to set it back to, uh, let's say, 900. Uh, oh, this was our inner. Yeah, but I'm going to leave this as well because I want to show something else why it is actually good that you are able to specify when the mobile navigation, when this hamburger is being triggered. So let's say, for example, uh, let's set this to 900. And let's republish again. Refresh. Like this, and then you can see that our width here is set to uh, 1036. Let's clear this. Uh, but if you would be resizing, as you can see, 977, and once it gets to 900, our mobile navigation is being triggered, and then you can use it as a mobile navigation. But let's say, for example, that you have Let's increase the spacing of those elements. You can increase the spacing between each element as well. Currently set at 20. Let's set it to 50 maybe. And then republishes again. Okay, great. Now you can see that. All right, fresh here. That our menu has a, an, an item on the second line, and we don't want that actually. First, let's increase the inner width as well a little bit. 980. So you can play around first also with the inner width. And then let's see our navigation items. And you can see that when I get to 980, no, wait, it's less, 950 pixels that we have a menu item that jumps to the second line external in this case. Just like that. So what you could do, for example, since you know that it jumps uh, 
to 950 pixels more or less to the second line you can change this to avoid that the item jumps and increase the navigation hamburger when it when it's being shown actually so if we would set that to 970 for example and publish it again let's make it a bit bigger and now we set it to 980 I think so when we when we would resize now you can see that that mobile trigger navigation is, is not allowing for the external uh, navigation element to be shown on the second line and we just have our navigation menu that is shown up. So again, lots of uh, settings to play around with. You can definitely style the men, uh, navigation menu as you like. You even have the option of uh, changing, of picking any font family from the Google library. So if you wanna change uh, to Robota Slab, for example, you can use all the weights as well. So let's use 300 save and done and you can see that our font family changed to robota slab with that specific way we selected uh, so lots of options and i hope you like this item thank you very much